Hello and welcome back to a beautiful sunny day in Thailand. We're between tropical pounding thunderstorms. But I'm here today to come back after a three month holiday away from my current and voltage sensor board project. Where has the time gone? Well, I've been doing some 3D design and printing. I worked on my motorbike brakes. I went to the electric vehicle conference in Bangkok. I went to Europe for a month. I worked on two Android apps. And it's pretty much all been an exercise in frustration avoidance, which I should trademark that term. Because the uh, while this little project is kind of fun, it has certainly led to a certain amount of frustration on many points. Primarily myself, some of the things I just don't know enough about to be successful and it's taken a lot of research and test and test and try and test and try and test and break it and do it again. Uh, other things uh, I'm at the mercy of. Uh, software libraries, tooling, chip documentation, contradictory information from places I've looked. Um, so I've had a lot of time to think about how I want to kind of re-pivot on this project and take it in what will hopefully be a more successful direction. Primarily on this factor I'm moving, I'm abandoning ASF4 from the Atmel people and I'm going back to ASF3. Now, why would that make sense? Uh, for my listeners who are paying attention, very smart people, they know that ASF4 is not just a better, more complete, more robust version of ASF3. It's a completely different animal. ASF4 is meant to be a nice software layer on top of all of what goes on in the hardware. Nice from the programmer point of view by giving me nice uh, function names, things that make sense, the way you would write code in Java for Android or any web platform. ASF3 is designed and written by hardware engineers. It is an opaque way to write code to make things work with your chip. It's hard to read, it's hard to debug, uh, it's hard to understand their documentation, but it's the only thing that works now and it's been around for a long time so despite my misgivings I'm, I'm dumping myself back into the world of ASF3. Um, the things that are in its favor is it's been around for a long time. It's very robust. The documentation is there. And in addition to that, there is a wealth of people on the internet who have used this platform with different Atmel chips. They publish uh, source code for examples. They ask questions about this and somebody comes along and answers it maybe exactly the same question I have that it, there's a trove of information about ASF3 out there on the internet so I think that's going to get me through my software problems of trying to work with this chip now I am also going to take the opportunity to improve on the circuit design primarily by cheating and by cheating in the engineering world is we stand on the shoulders of giants, look at what they did, and take that as our starting point. So, what I'm showing you here is actually the entire schematic for the SAM21 explained board, which is the, the board that I used to do my testing with in the last video. This board was designed and built by the Atmel chip people as a platform for people like me to do our software experiments on and connect up different hardware bits and I can learn from the way they designed this board. Okay, so what kind of things can I learn? Well, the first is crystal handling. Now, I was using the crystal that's built into the chip and my reading on that 
says that it's not very accurate. And when I'm trying to write data on the CAN bus at 500,000 baud, that's just not going to work. You need an extremely accurate, stable clock source so those ones and zeros go on the wire at the time that they're expected to by the other device that's reading it. And they've got uh, two different crystal setups here that I can exploit. Um, another thing they're doing is they're, sh they're using transistors to drive LEDs to show the status of one of the lines. My board, what I was doing, I was using the, the high voltage of that signal just to drive the resistor and the LED directly. Um, the problem with that is that puts a burden on that signal which corrupts it and doesn't let it really do its job. If you have the signal drive a transistor and then the transistor drives the resistor and the LED, it's much more stable and more elegant way to do it. And the, these little transistor packages are tiny and they, no problem fitting them on the board. Another thing is the CAN bus itself. There, the, uh, this is the CAN bus driver chip. They've got capacitors that they're using uh, on the data pins. And then you go back through here. And then there's another capacitor here to ground with a couple of resistors. Um, I've never seen this in the documentation anywhere. But if they put it on the board, it's got to be useful. And so that's the CAN bus path all the way back to the main CPU. Um, and I'm just going to troll through this schematic and find cool things to put on my board. And then I'm also going to look at the input and output signals I'm using and try and map them as close as I can to the way that the explain board does for my analog current input, my analog voltage input, and the, the CAN bus output. And that way, the my chip will be wired up as close to the way this chip is wired up. Uh, it gets rid of some more unknown problems. Um, that that will get me to obviously an updated version of the schematic and a new circuit board coming out of China. But what I'm going to do in the meantime is use the explain board and port over the code I've written so far to ASF3 and run in the code and tweak the code to read the voltage from my battery pack, read the amperage through that really cool uh, current sensor chip, and read and write data on the CAN bus, all using the explain board just with my extra components plugged into the little pins on the side of the board. That will prove that my software works, the, the circuitry works, and then when my board comes back, there's a relatively uh, good possibility that the board is going to work. So all of that is my job, and I thank you for coming along and letting me uh, pivot on this project. And so all of that lets me take the project in a new direction to get me to the place where I want to be. If I'm going down the highway, I'm taking about a 45 degree turn off onto a new highway driving a better vehicle on that highway to get me to my destination, if I can really torture that analogy a little bit more. As I said in the when I kicked off this project, uh, failure is an option. I knew there were going to be problems. I knew I had things to learn. I knew I was going to do things wrong. And I knew I was going to have to make revisions despite, you know, hurting my own feelings. But your feelings don't count in engineering. Uh, I am not putting people into space. So like Gene Krantz on the, the Apollo program said, failure is not an option. Failure is an option in this project. So I'm experiencing this firsthand. You're all coming along on the ride with me. You've seen it too. And I hope you can relate this to your own projects and maybe other things going on in your life in that it's okay for everything to not go perfectly the first time. We're just human and that's actually part of the fun. I find I learn more when something doesn't work than when it works the first time. So that'll wrap it up for today. Enjoy your day. Uh, you might have noticed I've taken a bit of a change in the way I'm handling YouTube these days. 
hopefully it's less of a burden on you to to put up with my uh, my little messages at the start so uh, I'll get back to you when I've got something new to report thanks Welcome people who stayed to the end of this exciting video. I just want to let you know I've had a bit of an epiphany about YouTube and it makes me sad. I've been um, asking people to subscribe to my channel and click the like button in the hopes that uh, YouTube would recognize my channel and kick in a little ad revenue for all these goodies that I'm buying to help me with my little projects. And I realize it's all in vain. YouTube is caring less and less about the people who use its channel. Even the big boys and the big girls uh, are having to go to something like Patreon for financial support. And I, I'm just not worthy of a Patreon following for anybody. So if you've enjoyed my stuff and you want to see more of it, go ahead and click subscribe and like if you like. Otherwise, just enjoy this picture of my beach here in Thailand and enjoy the rest of your day and I thank you very much.